Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you again through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. I'm enjoying some winter sports with a couple of cold-blooded skates. Personally, I don't mind the low temperature anymore. That's because I wear a snow storm storm coat. Keeps the cold spirits out. <laughs> yes, sir. Now I'm just a werewolf in a sheepskin line shroud. <laughs> mm. Oh, him? Now, that's our photographer, Artie. Yes, he just passed out while taking a picture from overexposure. <laughs> Ready now for our excursion beyond the grave. Let me warn you, we're a bit crowded. You may not be able to get a round-trip ticket. We can accommodate you on the way out, but coming back, you'll have to double up with a call. The fog rolls in from the sea and begins to blanket the long, narrow island, which is joined to the Florida mainland by a bridge. In the lone house on the island, two men stand at the window, watching the mist develop into a thick gauze, obscuring the lights on the mainland. Professor, the fog is getting worse. Look, look out there. It, it's covering everything like a disgusting, evil monster. It'll lift by morning. Morning, morning. Morning. I may not be here by morning. What the devil do you mean by that? I mean I may not be alive. What do you Unless thought? you help me. I asked you out here tonight because I was afraid to be alone. But you said before that your uh, sister-in-law, Carol, and, and her husband, what's his name, uh, Everett, would be here. Yes, Winston, but you're my friend. You're my closest friend. For the past week, I had a feeling that death was coming here to the island. And then when the fog began to roll in from the sea, I knew it would be tonight. Arthur, you're not making sense. You've got nothing to worry about. Except for being a little nervous, you're perfectly healthy. You don't and... understand, Vincent. Valerie's come back. Valerie? Yes, she's here on the island. For heaven's sake, Arthur, get hold of yourself. She's and here, stop... out there, someplace in that fog. That's impossible, and you know it. It's been six months since your wife Valerie drowned. They never found her body. It, it was never washed up on shore. A drowned body isn't always found. She never went out on that boat. Of course she did. It was all settled at the coroner's inquest. No. No, there were some things that were never settled. What do you mean by that? You know Valerie. You know how strange and moody she was. Well, a great many people are moody. No, no. Not like Valerie was. She would prowl this island at night with that cat of hers always following. Everywhere she went, that cat would be with her. And on foggy nights, they'd be gone for hours. Well, that still doesn't prove that Valerie wasn't on that boat. Of course it does. Don't you understand? Cats hate water. I begged her many times to go out fishing with me. She'd never step foot in a boat. Look, this is all just your imagination working overtime. Oh, Vincent, she's come back to kill me. She hated me. From the day we were married, she hated me. On her wedding night, she flew into a rage. She scratched me. Her hand was like a claw, like a cat's claw. And now she's come back to kill me. You better stop talking. The cat kind of... disappeared the night Valerie did. Well, of course it did. It drowned with her. No. The cat's come back to the island. I've heard it at night. What you heard was probably a stray cat that wandered onto the island across the bridge. What? Now, uh, I'll get one. Hello. Arthur Cameron. Yes, who's this? Listen. Woo! You have six hours to live, Arthur. Just six more hours. It was Valerie. She spoke to me. What are you talking about? The cat was with her. She, she said I had six hours to live. Six hours? Here, let me have that phone. It's no use. She's hung up. Oh, maybe we can trace the call. Hello? Hello, operator? Operator? You're going to kill me. You've got to help. Now, just take it easy, Arthur. I'll get the police in a minute. Hello, operator? Operator? So long. Why doesn't she answer? I think I know why. I'm afraid the wires have been cut. Come on. I'm driving you to the mainland. Can't you drive faster? With the fog as thick as it is, Arthur, I'm going faster than I should. But you've got to get me off the island. The bridge is just ahead. We'll be on the mainland in a few minutes. Say, I just remembered something. What? 
You said that Valerie's sister Carol and uh, her husband Everett would be out here to visit you tonight. Yes, but we can't wait for them. What time do they say they'd be here? 8.30. Well, it's past that now. They should drive along this road any moment. Maybe we'll meet them and then we'll... Why did you stop? We can't stay here. The bridge. If I hadn't stopped quickly enough, we'd both have been killed. This end of the bridge has been washed out. Vincent, please, let's go back into the house. She's somewhere near us in the fog here. I can feel her. I'm not going in until I find out where that phone wire was cut. I'm going to splice it together again. It's our only chance of reaching the police. It's nine o'clock. An hour has gone by already. And if I'm not out of here by two o'clock... What is it? Look, look, you can see it through the fog. There's a strange yellow light down the road. Hmm? Why, it's the headlight of a car coming this way. A car? Yeah, quick. Behind the house here and stay out of sight. It's turning into the driveway. How could a car have come onto the island with that bridge washed out? Shh, be quiet. Somebody's getting out. They're coming this way. What? It's, it's Carol and Everett. Carol? Everett? Arthur? What in the deuce are you doing out here in the back of the house? You scared me. Never and I'm so glad you're here. What's the matter, Arthur? You act like uh, you... I'll tell you in a minute, but... How did, how did you get here? How do... Say, what's gotten into you? How did you get on the island? We drove over the bridge and up the shore road. How else can you get here? But how could you drive over the bridge? It's been washed out. Washed out? I saw it with my own eyes and Vincent saw it too, didn't you, Vincent? I certainly did. Oh, Vincent, I didn't know you were here. Yes, Everett, and I'm glad I am. Well, you two must be mistaken. Carol and I drove over that bridge less than three minutes ago. Three minutes, huh? Why do you say it that way? Are you sure you haven't been on the island longer than that? What does he mean? Hanged if I know. Some very strange things have been happening. Arthur's life has been threatened. What? It's true. By your sister, Valerie. Don't you two know that April Fool's Day is months away? Oh, God, you want Everett, but it's true. Even the telephone wire has been cut. This is the telephone. Yeah. So the telephone wire has been cut, huh? You better answer it, Arthur. Uh, I'm almost afraid. Come on, I'll go in with you. Hurry, Arthur. All right. Hello? Hello. Arthur. Valerie! We are here, Arthur. Listen. It's nine o'clock, Arthur. You have five more hours to live. waiting. I can't stand it. Why don't the police come? Now, take it easy, Arthur. They'll be here. We only phoned them a few minutes ago. But something might happen before they get here. We can't just sit around waiting for them to arrive. Of course, it would be difficult to find anybody out there in that fog. But we could look around until the police got here. No, no. No, I'm not going out there. She's waiting for me. Arthur, please try to understand. It couldn't be Valerie. You don't know any of you. I can feel it. She's... She's coming closer and closer every minute. Arthur, you've got nothing to worry about. I've got this gun. And believe me, I won't hesitate to use it. Vincent, I didn't know you were in the habit of carrying a gun. I gave it to him, Everett, before you arrived. What's oh. the matter? Don't you trust me with a gun? I really don't trust anyone with a uh, gun. Uh, Carol, what is it? Well, there was something outside the window. A sort of face. Carol, please, now don't you get started on this crazy nonsense. No. It's just a swirling fog. No, I saw it. But now it's gone. I could make out the eyes. They were shining like the eyes of a... Oh, God! Yes, yes, she's coming for me! Let's go, Everett. That came from the back of the house. No, don't leave me here. Carol, you go with Vincent. I'll stay with Arthur. All right. Vincent! Vincent, wait! Arthur, I stayed with you because I want to talk about Vincent. I think it was foolish of you to give him that gun. Vincent's my friend. I trust him. You shouldn't. Why do you say that? Don't you remember how he acted at the coroner's inquest? He testified against you time and again, very subtly, to make them think you were responsible for Valerie's death. You were wrong. Vincent would have no reason to know. He and Valerie were quite close before you came along, Arthur. Even after you came along. That isn't true. He even saw the night she disappeared. You don't know what you're saying. At the inquest, he swore he wasn't on the island that night. But he was. And I can prove it. Here. Look at this. The cigarette lighter. Yes. 
with Vincent's initials on it. You can still see them through the rust. Where did you get that light? Carol and I found it in the water near the boathouse. I remember the day after Valerie disappeared, Vincent made a remark about losing his life. Now, do you still think he's such a friend? What? If what you say is true, you and Carol and I have got to stay together until the police get here. You're sure they're on the way? Yes, they told me on the phone it would take them less than 15 minutes to get here. Well, it may not be safe for you to wait for them here. We'll uh, go down to the bridge to meet them. No, no, I'm not going out in that fog. She's there waiting for me. Look, Arthur, you've got more to fear from Vincent than anyone. But don't come on before he returns. All right. We'd, uh, we'd better go out through the French windows. Good idea. Stay close to the house until we get to the garage. The, the fog is so thick, I, I can't see you. I'm just on the edge of the gravel path. Wait. What's wrong? Arthur, stay where you are. Where are you? Something's out here near us. More no wolves. Just brush against me. Oh! Run! Run! Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Don't go away, kitty. We need you for a couple of more murders. <laughs> Everett's dead, you know. That's what he gets for letting a black cat cross his throat. Say, how do you like that Valerie? She's some wife, huh? Nagging her husband right to the grave. The same one she's in. <laughs> Well, Valerie saw about that last phone call she made. The operator said to her, Five cents for the next five murders, please. <laughs> now let's get back to our frightened friends on that Florida island. She meant to kill me, Carol. She mistook Everett for me. Arthur, please. How is he, Vincent? He's dead. Oh, no. Everett. It's as if his throat was torn open oh, by a wild no. animal. I told you she was more animal than human. Oh. She and that cat, they were in here. Carol, you'd better not touch the body. Oh, leave me alone. You've done it up already. What's that supposed to mean? You know exactly what it means, Vincent. And when the police come, I'm going to tell them how you ran away from me out there in the fog. I didn't run away from you. I thought you were behind me when I came back to the house. You're lying. Just a moment, Carol. Why? What is it? The cigarette lighter that Everett had in his hand, it's missing. What cigarette lighter? You know the one I mean. The one that was found in the water near the boathouse. I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. I have. Arthur, you'd better search him. Now, look here. If you're as innocent as you claim to be, Vincent, you shouldn't mind. All right, then go ahead and search. I will after I make this call. Whom are you calling? The police. Can't understand why they haven't gotten here yet. It's almost 10 o'clock. Hello. Hello, operator. Will you please connect me with police headquarters and hurry? Do you think you've been calling the police department all this time, Arthur? Oh, yes. Valerie. We're still here. It's ten o'clock, Arthur. You have just four more hours. Arthur, where's Vincent? I just left him. Carol, did you know about him and Valerie? Well, yes, Arthur. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted to. But after all, she was my sister. We'll have to get away from him. Yes. Well, suppose we tell him that we're going for the police. He can't have any objection to that. But suppose he wants to come with us in the car. Well, somebody has to stay here with Everett's body. Would you think it's safe to leave him here? If he killed Everett, he'll have a chance to destroy any evidence. We can't help that. It's safer to leave him here than to take him with us. He still has that gun of yours. That's right, I have. Vincent, <laughs> forgive me for disturbing you two. I thought you were supposed to be outside. I was outside for a while. But I saw somebody moving around in the other room, so I came back. When I got to the other room, I found Everett's body missing. What? It's gone? Everett's body is gone? Vincent, you were in that room before alone. So was Carol after I left, weren't you, Carol? Oh, I don't remember. I may have been. You were there alone, Carol, I remember. Arthur, you walked with me to the front door. When I left the house, the body was still there. After that, I don't know what happened. 
But perhaps Carol does. What are you driving at? What do you think I'm driving at? You mean that I did something with Everett's body? Draw your own conclusions. I've drawn mine. How dare you imply such things? I won't listen to another word of such talk. Not another word. Well, Arthur, what do you think? I don't know what to think. I'm going out of my mind. I don't know where to turn, who to trust. You can trust me. I wish I was sure that I could. Oh, of course you can. Now, come here, Arthur. Don't you see? The one who hopes to kill you is trying to break you down first. Now, for your own sake, you mustn't give in. I don't know who's behind all this, but I do know this. It's all part of a plan to destroy you little by little. Don't you see that now? Nothing makes sense. Now, you listen to me, Arthur, and listen to me well. Because there isn't a great deal of time left. We've got to get away from Carol while there's still time, while she's not here. Why? Can't you see? She's trying to kill you. Whoa. Yes, don't be a fool. Carol is the one who lied to you. She and Everett both. They intended to murder you, but in the darkness and the fog, Carol made a, a fatal mistake. She thought it was you she was killing, not Everett. No, no, that was Valerie in the room. A human animal was there. You saw the claw marks on Everett's throat. That could be accomplished with an iron claw. Valerie is dead. What makes you so sure of that? Because I know she's dead. They never drove across that bridge at nine tonight. They've been here on the island all evening. How do you know that? I know that because we saw that bridge with our own eyes. And I saw it again just ten minutes ago. It's still down. You're just saying that. Come, come on with me, Arthur, and you'll see for yourself. No! No, you're trying to get me out of the house, out into that fog where Valerie is. Will you stop being an idiot? Here. Take this gun. That'll make you feel any better. Take it and hold it in my back while we're outside. Now, let's get away from Carol while there's still a chance. All right. Give me the gun. Yeah. Now, keep in front of me all the time. And I'm warning you. If you make one false move, I'll kill you. You see? Carol and Everett were lying to us. The bridge is still down. You're right, Vincent. They couldn't have come across that bridge. Of course not. The only trouble is we can't get back over it now either. But we've got to get off this island Wait somehow. a minute, wait a minute. I should have thought of it before. Your boat. I saw the motorboat after the accident. Well, what about a rowboat? Uh, there's still one of those down at the boathouse at the other end of the island. Good. Then we can row over to the mainland. Yes, yes, of course. Come on. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Back to the house for the car. Don't be ridiculous. We can't go back there now. we got to walk. All right, along the beach here. Got to walk faster than that, Arthur. Vincent... I have a feeling we're being followed. Ah, uh, just your imagination. Who could see us in this fog? But I tell you that... We are being followed. I told you. Look behind us. Yes, I can see it now. It's a cat. And there's a woman with it. Valerie! We've lost them, Arthur. They can't be far behind. Doesn't make any difference now. There's the boathouse just ahead. The boat! It's not at the land. Well, it must be. You can't see it because of the fire. I can see it isn't there. All right, then we'll hide in the boathouse till morning. You can't hide from the dead. Oh, will you please stop that nonsense? We're dealing with somebody very much alive. You've still got that gun. You can't harm the dead with a gun. Come on, we're going inside. Door's locked. I didn't lock it. This boathouse has never been locked before. All right, wait here. I'll break through the window and come around through the inside. There, just wait for me and I'll unlock the door. They're coming, Vincent! Hurry, hurry! Now, come on inside, Arthur. Quickly. Better lock the door. Yes. Arthur! Uh, We're in luck. There's a phone here. Well, that's right. I forgot. Maybe it hasn't been disconnected like the other one. I'll try it. Hello. Hello, operator. Hello, Arthur. <gasps> it's 11 o'clock, Arthur. Just. Three more hours. Quarter or two, Arthur. You can't stay here another minute. And I can't run away any longer. Where would I go? Where would I hide? If she's going to kill me, let her come and do it. You've still got 15 minutes. Oh, my time's run out now. Well, I wanted to help you save yourself, but you wouldn't let me. I'm not going to stay here another second. Vincent! This is your last chance. Do you want to make a run for it with me? I told you it was no use. All right, then there's nothing more I can do. Goodbye. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
Yes, Archie. I've come for you. Valerie, please. You know why I've come, don't you? Please, don't come any closer. You hated me so much. Couldn't even wait until death came to me naturally. You knew how much I hated water. How much I was afraid of. Stand where you are. Don't come another step. You despised me because I... Your bullets can't harm me. There's no way you can harm me anymore. Because I am dead. But I can harm you. Valerie. Valerie, forgive me. Valerie, please forgive me. I, I, I was sorry as soon as I threw you off the boat, but it was too late. I, I dived into the water to find you, but I couldn't. I tried until my lungs almost burst. Please, please forgive me. Why? Why didn't you tell the police? I wanted to live. Well, now it doesn't make any difference. You're wrong about that, Arthur. Please. It makes a big difference to us. What are you doing back here? I was listening outside your confession. Confession? Thank you, Miss Mason. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Miss Mason? The fog outside and this dim light in here helped her disguise. And... And it wasn't Valerie. How could it be? Valerie's dead, isn't she? And the dead can't really return. But Everett, who, who killed him? Everett? Everett's alive. Very much alive, Arthur. What? It wasn't hard for me to pretend being dead with uh, Vincent and Carol keeping you away from my body. And you, all of you were in on this together. Yes. The police couldn't help us because Valerie's body was never found. But we knew you had killed her. We just had to wait for the chance to prove it. And now you have my confession. Come on, Arthur. Wait a minute, Everett. Hello? Hello, Bennett. It's all over. Hmm. Yeah. You can hook up the wires again. And, Bennett, you'd better get to work on that bridge right away. We're making a trip to the mainland. It's an outrage. All those juicy chances for murder and not one drop of blood spill. Uh Well, I guess that's the way it is some nights. You just can't lay away a cough or so. (laughs) And that Valerie, what a judge she turned out to be. Didn't even have enough courage to step out of her grave. Uh, confidentially, though, the reason is Valerie doesn't like to be seen in shrouds. <laughs> oh, no, no, there's no moral to this story. Just the ugly fact that when you're dead, brother, you're dead. <laughs> Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas. This is the United States.